Have you ever had one of those days where everything goes right up until it doesn't? Man, hey there, I'm John, this is Two Brothers RC, and this is the Free Ring Grieten. I know it bugs some people when I call a Swedish jet's name out in Swedish. Sorry guys, can't stop, won't stop. Three and a half years later, I'm following up on Grieten after I prophetically said that I would look for a way to hover it. The FMS motor is a huge upgrade over the stock 1920 kV freewing and runner. It has so much power that I can almost confidently hover the jet. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm going to work on it. Well, after I wrecked Mirage, I salvaged the motor and threw it in. Holy crap! This was the upgrade that Gryapen needed. The jet ships with this motor now, so anyone who bought it in recent history already has the awesomeness that is the 3658-2150 kV motor. The thrust to weight ratio is enough to hover on a fresh SMC high voltage battery. Observe. Can't believe we are hovering Gryapen. It's amazing. And that low, just incredible. That Mirage motor is such a massive difference to this plane. The AR10360T is off the chain good. Now look, a gyro doesn't buy skill and it doesn't know where the trees are. That's what my wife says and I'm inclined to agree. You need a gyro to fly 45 millimeters behind the marks like I do and to keep it stable enough to hover. Although, it doesn't mean that you're always going to succeed. No big deal. So you no big deal. <laughs> That's the best thing about that. It's that it's like it. Ah, it's awesome. Yeah, you did hear me right. That super expensive AR10360T is more than just a really expensive receiver. It's also a turbine grade gyro system now with four different gyros that can be used to control various aspects of Gryapen or really any other jet that's got the potential for some really fancy mixing. That's as close to fly by wire as you're going to get in model aviation at this price. Here's what it actually looks like in practice. You wanna make your jet do this where you have three different gyros or even four. We have one for the canards, which makes them very responsive. We have one for the elevons, which makes them a little responsive and roll and pitch. And we have one for the thrust vectoring, which makes it really responsive. So we can get this plane to hover as you saw me torque rolling it a little while ago. But you can only use multiple gyro systems with an AR10360T. And it's a little bit of an involved setup process, so I can show you guys what exactly you need to do to make this work. Okay, so maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself just a little too much here. Next Saturday, I will be covering how to use AS3X Plus, which will also cover how to use the AR10360T, which has a specialized setup system to utilize all the features available to it. But it's awesome, and I promise it'll be worth the wait. I thought last year would be the definitive Gryapen review, but this year I'm just going to go all out and let it rip. When it comes to this jet, here are some do's and don'ts. If you want it, do buy it with thrust vectoring. I don't think that it's worth buying or flying without it. I thought that it was amazing when I first got it without thrust vectoring because it was John's first big boy jet. Torque roll! Torque roll! Torque it! You don't know what you don't know, and I didn't know that this jet is kind of doo-doo in stock form. It is super nose-heavy and not a whole lot of fun unless you enjoy flying Cessnas shaped like fighter jets. Do put some weight in the tail, to be specific 45 grams at the back of the nozzle. With a 4400 high voltage pack or a regular SMC LiPo, that'll get you to balance 45 millimeters behind the marks if you slam the pack all the way to the back of the canopy. Push it further forward if you're not ready for that yet, or just add less weight to the tail. Do use an AR10360T and follow my AS3X Plus setup guide next week. I will be deep diving into how to get the most out of it. Everyone can now follow my advanced setup because everyone has at least 14 channels and most of us have 20 channels with the latest Spectrum Radio update. Don't fly it without thrust vectoring or on the stock center of gravity. That's it. That's all. Just don't do it. 
Freewing made a major update to their gear retrack systems in the last three years, bringing them out of the Stone Age to support six volts. Before, like a year ago, Freewing gear retracks could only handle up to five and a half volts of power. Now that doesn't sound like anything important, but hear me out here. When I got Gryapin as an ARF, I used an FMS Predator 100 amp ESC because I had a bunch of them laying around and I figured I would save myself some cash. That thing had a motor lead desolder itself in the air from how much power that the Mirage motor was drawing, and I lost thrust completely. Power's out. Ooh. Literal loss of power there. Thanks. And somehow I landed a dead stick. Now that Freewing Retrax supports 6 volts, you don't have to run any weird step downs to use Spectrum Avians. Long story short, now I can run an Avian ESC without burning up my Retrax eventually. And if you want to have a great option to improve your jet, get an Avian. They are robust and powerful ESCs, and they work great with Spectrum Radios, giving you integrated voltage telemetry and the ability to program your ESC from your radio, along with being nearly indestructible in regular use. I'm bringing up thrust vectoring again because the high alpha passes that you're seeing me perform are literally impossible with the jet without thrust vectoring. They're hard to do without a gyro on the vector nozzles. They're impossible without vectoring at all. If the angle of attack goes up too much, the jet's vertical stabilizer will deep stall and the jet will depart from controlled flight. You can see this behavior on Eurofighter on screen. Even with full rudder, nothing changes because there's not enough air flowing over it to keep it tracking straight. Gyro stabilization on Kuryapin automatically prevents this so long as you've got throttle applied. You can see it wanting to stall out in the part here, but the gyro won't let it. That is one of the reasons why a gyro is awesome. One spoiler for next week's AS3X Plus video, take this pro tip from me and don't use heading hold on a jet with a narrow wheelbase like this. That is why it crashed earlier in the vid. The nose wheel gyro hadn't centered itself yet, so it pointed right at us and rolled into the box. Thankfully, there was very little damage and it flew right again afterward. Gryapin loves to ground loop because of how narrow its wheelbase is. Now that we all have 14 to 20 channels on Spectrum, hop on Discord and use the Setup Guides channel to learn how to set up an independently trimmable nose wheel. And you can even learn how to set up a curved mix to put Expo on sensitive nose wheels like Gryapin so it won't ground loop anywhere near as easily. So, what have I learned in three years of owning Gryapin? Well, first, it's not that great in stock form, but we've pretty much covered that already. Get thrust vectoring or don't buy the jet. It'll be super disappointing if you're expecting it to perform as well as similar freewing jets. You can spend your money better on other ones. Second, with some weights in the tail and properly configured AS3X Plus, it is simply outstanding. There is no better flying plane that I have found yet. I have to come out and say it, IKEA jet here is actually my favorite airplane to fly. And those of you guys who know me know that I never say that anything's my favorite because everything has something unique that it brings to the table. Because this one offers so much to do with all the gyro configuration that I can set up and it allows me to fly pretty much however I want to. I promise that I will teach you guys how to use AS3X Plus next Saturday, August 17th. I've said it before and I'll say it again. My favorite airplanes are the ones where I can do some work and make them my own and make them fly how I think that they should. And I think that you should add Gryapin to your hangar, but definitely hop on Discord and ask for help when you do because I'll gladly help you make it fly better. IKEA Jet deserves nothing less. If you feel intimidated by how I'm flying, just remember that I worked my way up to flying like this and if I can do this, you can do it too. I totally believe in you. On our Discord server, I regularly share tips and techniques to help people fly better, and if you show me how you fly with a video, I will happily give you advice on how to improve judgment-free. I just want to see people achieve their flying dreams, and if I can help you do that in any small way, I'm happy. Don't let naysayers tell you that what I do is impossible. I'm not special, I'm not unique, and I'm not amazing. I'm just a regular guy with a gigantic mouth that talks too much and happens to run a YouTube channel. All the skills that you see on display here are the result of constant practice, patience, and a willingness to allow myself to fail so that I learn from my mistakes, because I fail all the time. If the three crash videos and upcoming fourth crash vids aren't proof of that, I'm nowhere near perfect. Nobody is. Flying is a skill, and if you want to improve that skill, you have to take the time to practice and push yourself to do things that used to make you scared and anxious. Consider hopping on Discord, and I and our awesome community will help you overcome your fears and reach your dreams. Until next week, I'm John, and I'll see you guys next time.